This video is brought to you by Manscaped. Stick around to hear more about the discount they're providing to the entire upper echelon community. What is the most hated and most disgusting website on all of the internet? Answers will obviously vary, and I'd be willing to bet that quite a few people already have something come to mind immediately, but today I want to make the case that Ripoff Report, the consumer advocacy platform created by Ed Magidson in 1997, is worse, in totality, than pretty much anything else you will find outside of the dark web. I know what people are thinking, how could that ever be possible? To begin, we need to understand how Ripoff Report functions, and to understand that, we need to look at Upper Echelon itself. This right here is a report filed about Upper Echelon Gamers, more specifically Upper Echelon LLC. The report claims, in no uncertain terms, that I am a scammer, I am a fraud, who steals money from viewers under a program that allows them to pay for specific video topics. This is obviously not true. No such program exists, no such event has ever occurred, yet here stands the report, filed by Jonathan, with an extensive overview of what exactly this program is, how he was scammed, and why the business itself, namely me, should be condemned. Now, interestingly enough, this report also contains an acrostic puzzle, which in this case will show that the first letter of each paragraph spells out the phrase UEG rules. Not only that, but the overall amount of money expected to be paid for video topics is 420 Blaze It. And when you examine this report in context, well, it's quite obvious that none of it is real. Even still, this report will remain up, unaltered, unaffected, and unchanged, until I pay Ripoff Report $2,000. This is the part that is critical to understand. Ripoff Report exists, or so it is claimed, this is important, it is claimed to be this way, as an unalterable, immutable record of corporate malfeasance. The creator, Ed Magidson, has a strict adherence to continuity of information, and thus believes in the absolute authority of consumers to make their voices heard. The result of this is that pages cannot be changed. Not even the person who made the report initially can change or delete what they wrote, because reports are permanent, and once filed, these records of business deception will not only persist, but will rank highly in Google for years, even decades. But why does it matter? According to data analysis from Chitika Network, the number one spot of a Google search page receives 34% of all organic traffic. This is critical to understand because any small business, any business at all for that matter, is attempting to secure that number one spot and receive organic traffic from customers on certain keywords. It might be referrals, it might be one-time buyers looking if they want to purchase again, or any number of other scenarios, but customers, patrons, fans, you name it, will often search for business names on Google. When this is done properly, a small business that sells, I don't know, just randomly, let's say candles, can be the number one spot. Its customers will see the website immediately when searching for keywords related to that topic, and then perhaps a few ads or articles mentioning their products down below. Perfect. However, due to the SEO talent, the search engine optimization talent of Ripoff Report and its staff, as well as its founder, if someone files a complaint with them about this candle shop, using its name, its address, and various other details, it is highly possible that the number one and number two slot on Google can be occupied by that report. The effects of this are devastating for small businesses. Imagine if nearly 50% of your potential customer base as their first impression on a Google search go from a direct connection to your website to a falsified report of your business being a scam. Imagine if that report contains accusations of criminal activity, sexual impropriety, or other horrifying behavior, and imagine, if you can, the effect that this will have on your livelihood. That is what Ripoff Report allows, and that is how they make their money. Let's continue with my own company, Upper Echelon, as an example. And people might obviously say, well, what about if the company deserves it? What if the report is true? Consumers deserve that kind of recourse. I know the arguments that are coming, just bear with me on the video. To dispute this report, the clearly, demonstrably, comedically false report that was created with an acrostic puzzle saying how awesome we are, I will need to pay $2,000 for VIP arbitration and $250 per comment on the post. If I do this, if I agree to pay them this ridiculous sum of money, one of their representatives will examine the post. I don't know who and I don't know what their ruling will be. And they'll determine what is or is not true as a function of evidence provided. There will then be redactions if statements are found to be false, and ultimately I can have the report kind of modified if I pony up the cash. What's more, this is not the only mechanism by which businesses are squeezed. Another option the site allows is called CAP, C-A-P, the Corporate Advocacy Program. And this one, if you pay enough money, can secure a deliberate change in Google search results. 
You can go from Mirabella Motors Total Scam Child Molesters, as a random example, to Mirabella Motors Verified and Trusted Business. I don't know anything about Mirabella Motors, just keep that in mind. It's a random example of how someone can file a report, say whatever they want, and then you can pay a shitload of money to not have those wild, inaccurate accusations be the first result in Google. Businesses are paying sometimes tens of thousands of dollars to be remediated by ripoff report because anyone can say anything and then those wild claims can kill your company outright. But the thing is, that's just the beginning. Before going further, it's time for the video sponsor. Today that sponsor is Manscaped and I'm happy to endorse their products which offer a wide range of men's grooming essentials. The core offering for this one is the Performance Package, which comes complete with the Lawn Mower 4.0 cordless, waterproof, skin safe blade, an LED light for precision trimming, crop preserver ball deodorant, and much more. Now, initial care is obviously important, but what comes after is also very important. I'm not kidding when I say that the new line of Manscaped boxer briefs are the most comfortable pairs that I personally own. They have a wide range of options you can buy individually or get them in sets of three. Lots of different choices. Moisture wicking, anti-chafing, breathable fabric with all kinds of other excellent products to choose from as well. Manscaped is the ideal place to shop for men's hygiene, and with that in mind, we have a discount. If you order soon, with the link down below and code UPPER, you can get 20% off and free international shipping. Again, using the link down below in the description and promo code UPPER, you can get 20% off and free international shipping right now. Big thank you to Manscaped for sponsoring the channel. All right. Understanding what Ripoff Report actually is and how it makes all of its money, let's dig deeper. In a rare interview with founder Ed Magidson, who speaks in the third person, he said the following, quote, If you ask Ed the question, Ed, do you think there are phony reports? Of course there are going to be. Are some of them exaggerated? Probably so. But if you're a business being complained about, you probably deserve what you're getting, end quote. This is an interesting statement because it helps establish the frame of mind that this platform operates under. Anyone can say anything, and it's probably justified. Once those people have said whatever they want, we will propel it to the top of the Google search results. And the only way to remove that horrible stain on your reputation is to pay us thousands. That's obviously extremely lucrative, but is it ethical? Let's explore the idea of paying for positive headlines. Ripoff Report and its founder seem to live in a fantasy world where what they do is meant to help people. That's the prime directive of their coverage and their platform. But when you are able to pay money and hide criticism, or manipulate how that criticism is labeled online in particular, there are issues. And Bank Card Empire is probably a perfect example of this. Bank Card Empire was a part of the corporate advocacy program, the business remediation program, and the customer satisfaction program on ripoffreport.com, likely paying many tens of thousands of dollars to augment, suppress, relabel, and obfuscate their negative feedback while dominating search results on Google with verified or trusted taglines in the first couple of results with glowing descriptions underneath until the company was brought down for telemarketing and business opportunity fraud. How about another one? Russ Dalby and the Dalby Education Institute. This one is great because we can look at precisely what your money will get you. Quote, Russ Dalby preview scam, complaints investigation, Russ Dalby customers can feel confident and secure when doing business with Dalby Education Institute, winning in the cash flow business. America's note network committed to customer success. Committed to customer satisfaction and success, Russ Dalby ensures that all customers get the highest level of service and support. Westminster, Colorado. Bonus update, ripoff report review, Russ Dalby has a commitment to the success of his customers, employees, and to ripoff report corporate advocacy, business remediation, and customer satisfaction program, end quote. Absolutely fantastic, glowing recommendations. Obviously an incredible business to work with. Oh, no. Turns out the Colorado Attorney General busted Dalby Institute for misleading advertising when its infomercials were designed to deceive customers. What's more, the owners were eventually banned by the FTC from telemarketing, selling business opportunities, and producing or distributing infomercials. So, just the type of people that you want being trusted and verified by a reputable consumer advocacy program. There are plenty of additional examples, but for the sake of time, we need to make a pivot to something much more technical. Ripoff Report has been sued more times than I can possibly count by more businesses and people than I even thought possible. As of 2017, the site had been sued over 70 times, and moving forward the next five years, that number would only grow further and accelerate. Here's the thing, though. Despite the website promulgating and elevating categorically false and often defamatory statements, 
these lawsuits have proven largely ineffective. Ripoff Report enjoys letter of the law section 230 protections in a way that allows them to protect themselves from being sued despite what is posted to their platform. It's a tricky legal situation because they make absolutely no effort to protect against the damage that their website can deal to others because that's kind of the point. The better the claim, the more damaging it is to any business at all, the more likely that business is to pay them if it hurts their ability to operate and make a living. But this kind of reputational hostage situation extends well beyond the professional and often becomes personal. Ripoff Report isn't just about businesses. This is the horrifying part here. Regular, everyday people can also use the site and leave reports about each other. I have three examples for today, but there are hundreds more. Probably thousands, likely tens of thousands. In its lifespan, Ripoff Report has had over two and a half million reports filed. And recognizing that kind of volume, this website has done incredible damage to a formidable number of people. Our first in-depth example, and keep in mind there are hundreds, probably thousands more that are even more extreme than this, is Robin Savage. Robin Savage was accused by someone of spreading AIDS to four people in California. And even when producing a negative AIDS test in her rebuttal, the post remains up. To this day, nearly 10 years later, her picture and personal information is listed on ripoffreport.com with a verified false accusation that she spread AIDS to multiple lovers. And the only way to get it taken down, if that would even work, there is no guarantee, is to pay thousands of dollars. She has contemplated ending her own life, as per an article on Forbes, where she was reached for comment. And when founder Ed Magidson was reached for comment as well, about a similar situation where a woman was accused of having herpes on his platform, which then became the top result for her name and business, he said, quote, This effing broad probably did something. And later states that she should have sued her accuser for slander, or paid ripoff report, this is the important part, she should have paid Ripoff Report its $2,000 fee to conduct an arbitration. The one problem? Ripoff Report does not require any valid information whatsoever, aside from an email, to write whatever you want on the website. This poor woman had no recourse other than to pay, pay up, right? Pay the money or allow her business and her personal name to be forever destroyed online. But as awful as the personal side of this website truly is, it is also useful to us here and now. This is a complaint about Sony Bonoy. This complaint on Ripoff Report alleges that Sony Bonoy and his friend Larry were attempting to sleep with underage girls. This kind of complaint is very common on the site. People weaponize it almost daily for this very purpose, to defame each other, but this one in particular is rather special. It turns out this complaint has been altered. The original party was Sergey Brin, co-founder of Google, and his friend Larry Page, the other founder of Google and Alphabet. Rather than a redaction, if the accused party pays the cash, which is the normal method, this was altered, and we can confirm this through public court documents when Ed Magidson was deposed, where it is stated, quote, It is a well-known fact that the report was not taken down. The name was simply changed from Bryn to Bonoy or something similar, end quote. Keep in mind, Ripoff Report is run by a team and founded by a man with extensive knowledge of search engine optimization, SEO. Their revenue model relies on ranking accusations in the search engine and then forcing businesses to pay for remediation. And with that in mind, we can see that the name Sony Bonoy will exclusively return results for the name Sony Bono. This was an extremely clever and simplistic way to bury the story because offending Google executives when your entire business model is to use Google search rankings to extract cash from people or businesses in crisis is obviously not a good idea. However, one example alone probably isn't good enough. Luckily, we have another one. We have a really good other one. Will Redacted, as per Ripoff Report, this very day, right now, is being accused of the worst type of thing on planet Earth. He's the worst type of person on planet Earth, according to this report. I can't say these words too often, or I'll get thrown out of YouTube search algorithm, but I'm pretty sure you know what it is. It involves kids and an adult, and you know what I'm saying. Anyway. Will Redacted was originally Will DeVry, the director of privacy and legal at Google. Obviously, this particular post would be changed, but what makes this example much more important, even though it is already another example of Ripoff Report altering its policies for specific people, namely Google executives or founders, is the response they would issue via email. Quote, Dear readers, like many other sites that allow user to, users to post comments, Ripoff Report does not normally investigate the accuracy of material posted by third parties, nor are we legally required to do so. 
However, when this type of post is brought to our attention, Ripoff Report has always had a policy of requiring supporting documentation, such as a police report for this type of serious allegation. For that reason, despite our general policy against removal, removing material from our site, we've redacted this report and have asked the author to provide us with whatever information he slash she has to substantiate this report." End quote. That right there solidifies reality. Ripoff Report has always had a policy of requiring supporting documentation, but this policy is almost never enforced. Claims like this are everywhere on the platform. They have torpedoed businesses, personal reputations, and individual lives. But the only times that alterations like this get made are when Google executives become targeted. I hope that the picture is beginning to form as to what exactly Ripoff Report really is, but I'm not finished with them yet. In that rare interview, founder Ed Magidson had a lot to say. He probably shouldn't have had a lot to say because it demonstrated his rancid personality, but here we are because he did. In an extensive monologue, he rails against the Better Business Bureau because, quote, according to his website, they solicit memberships in exchange for favorable status. And he even calls the Better Business Bureau a racketeering enterprise. The lack of self-awareness here is incredible. According to on-record depositions, an employee of Ripoff Report, Dixon Earl Woodard, stated, quote, they paid him off then, after being asked about a company called Mackenzie Scott. He went on to say, after being asked if Ed would write positive things when paid enough, quote, yeah, definitely. He takes it off, and not only does he take off the negative report, he replaced them with positive reports. He's writing them himself. So everything that's in the negative, he will spin it and say, the company feels terrible about this situation happening, and we, we rectify it the best we possibly can, and it looks like you're, you're timely in your response to the general public, end quote. Now, let's make sure and recall Dalby Education Institute, where the owners were convicted and barred from similar businesses, but Ripoff Report says, to this day, I might add, that they are committed to customer success, committed to customer satisfaction, and that customers can feel confident and secure when doing business with them. There is further evidence and deposition testimony to establish that Ed Magidson will and has manipulated reports. Under oath, he said it was a test, and then tried to backtrack, claiming, I don't know if I ended up doing it or not, later saying, quote, I had offered it, or either I changed the reports that they were bogus, or I removed some of the reports. But that was, excuse me, one time that I did that, if I did not, and I, I honestly could not remember, end quote, as he frantically tries to salvage an admission that he absolutely has changed things when companies are willing to fork over the cash. Requiring excessive payment to remediate businesses, having convicted fraudulent companies and individual people in your corporate advocacy program, allegedly altering content purely for the money and manipulating specific reports that pertain to powerful people, the ones that you need to keep making that money, you gotta keep them happy, while leaving similar, even identical information up that defames and demeans other businesses or individuals in order to secure additional victims, all combined demonstrates to me, in my personal opinion, that they are choosing content, unequally enforcing Section 230 requirements, and should therefore lose their safe harbor protections. But I'm still not done. Ripoff Report founder Ed Magidson is a despicable and rancid person, in my humble opinion. He lives in secret, afraid of the retaliation his victims might enact. He's actually proud of the threats that he receives. He wallows in them like some sort of badge of honor. But he also tries to remediate his own reputation with a particular blog. That blog is dedicated exclusively to praising him and trying to debunk false rumors about the unethical behavior of his own website. Here's the fun part. That website is listed in the Internet Archives and previously said the following, quote, This site was posted by friends of Ed Magidson as a way to let victims know Ed is real, he is human, and he does stand up for what he believes in, end quote. But that website was owned by two people, both of which were Ed Magidson. Even today, years later, after numerous updates to the blog site, it is registered to three people. With redacted information, we simply see Tempe, Arizona, and identical phone numbers for all three people. Ed Magidson, according to LinkedIn, lives in Tempe, Arizona, and lists the website as his own. Ed Magidson does not have friends. He does not have supporters. All he has is a vindictive, often deceptive, and completely unethical online rag where content is posted daily that targets and damages individual people as well as innocent businesses, and he uses this platform, knowing all of this, to extract the greatest amount of money he can, relishing the idea that this is happening to people all over the world, as he executes behavior that is similar to Better Business Bureau, only far worse in my mind, but refers to them 
as a racketeering enterprise. He speaks in the third person during interviews, according to Phoenix New Times, runs his servers, his waitresses, ragged, annoys everyone with his incessant demands, and has somehow leveraged that disgusting persona into a multi-million dollar global reputation incinerator, top ranked in Google search results on a myriad of topics and businesses that can be used to demand payment from millions of people, or rather require payment from millions of people and businesses, just to stop the reputational bleeding. It is my belief that Ripoff Report is the most hated and most disgusting website on the internet, and should never be taken seriously. Nothing written there should be believed. Nothing said on that platform is worthy of your time. And hopefully, if they continue this behavior, they will eventually lose Section 230 protections and be open to the full reprisal from people and businesses all over the world that they have harmed or destroyed. As a final note here, I recently covered a man named Jeff Lerner. I did this in an extremely critical way, and yet he was still willing to talk with me extensively, gather information with me, and ultimately his experience with Ripoff Report is what led me to doing this video. You'll notice the videos I did with regards to him in particular have been taken down because these were productive, eye-opening, and helpful conversations, which led me here today, understanding the damage that Ripoff Report has done on a daily basis. I'd like to thank him for his time. That's it, though. If you want to support, there are links down below, primarily Locals and Patreon, to get away from AdSense and so that serious topics being demonetized won't, won't really affect the channel. Also, another YouTuber to check out, merchandise, social media, Manscaped, etc., etc., but I'll cut it there and stop rambling. As always, thank you all for watching. If he does to try to sue me for something, he, although he claims he never sues people for defamation, even though that's fake, we actually have verification that he sued somebody for defamation. Anyway, if he wants to sue me, I'd love search and discovery. Man, I'm starting to really love that, that concept. Go American legal system. Anyway, have a nice night.